maybe in September when we, have the other one. when we have the other one, we'll be in person. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Let's just hope for the best. So before we start, let's, we have to uh, acknowledge our sponsors, of course, because this wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. And our sponsors for this particular quarterly breakfast uh, are the Double Tree by Hilton at Apodaca. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> Sex, Ken Dami, yay, Ken! Essay Recycling, Kubi, Karul, and of course, Christine, yay! yay so at this, time, at this time, what I'd like to ask the sponsors, would they like to uh, take a, a minute or something like that to give us an update on what's going on with their uh, companies or just let, give us a little uh, synopsis of, of their companies? Now, I know um, Christine will be speaking for Essay Recycling, and so, well, let's um, let's get started, Christine. Could you maybe give us a little insight on that the famous essay recycling? Christine, you're on. Uh, hi, guys. Good morning and happy Carson Quarterly Chamber Breakfast. I'm so happy to see everybody here. Yeah. Um, essay recycling. We're a full service uh, metal recycler, so we recycle non-ferrous and ferrous, which means metal, copper, brass, anything from. Uh, I say from the kitchen sink to the bridge and everything in between, we will take that. Um, we are committed to environmental sustainability and uh, I've been going green with SA Recycling now for, um, it's gonna be 20 years in October. Yeah, I was hired when I was 10. So before <laughs> anybody, before that, the question start. That, that, that was legal back then. Um, so um, we are so happy to be here. We're so happy to contribute to the chamber in any way that we can. You know, we're always here. We got your back, Lena. And um, yeah, I just want to say good morning to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. I love that. Yeah, I would, you know, you go over there. And, I'm in awe when I go over to their uh, facility and I, I'm standing there. Christine is asking me something. I'm just with my mouth open. I, it's just amazing to see that operation over there. It is fantastic. So we'll have to have a tour over there one time. I know I'm just teasing. <laughs> I, think, I think so. I think so. Yes. Oh, yeah. Michael likes that. He loves a tour and a taste of Carson. Oh, yeah. That's Michael Singh. You know, the economic development is coming out of him. Okay. Uh, Ed, let's hear about the. Uh, are you there, Ed, from the Double Tree by Hilton Carson? Are you there? Yeah. He, Ed? I guess he isn't. Okay. Well, maybe you'll come back. Ken, uh, is Ken there? Would you like to say a few words, Ken? Is Ken there from Phil? Yeah. Hi, Lena. Hi, oh. Lena. Good morning, everybody. Oh, Hello, Jeff. There Thanks for being is. here with us today. Uh, just a couple words about Phillips. Uh, we have a little bit over 900 employees and contractors at the refinery at every given day. Um, the refinery produces gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel for a Southern California market. Um, about 140,000 barrels a day of product. And uh, mm. just this last uh, February, March, and April, uh, we went through one of our biggest turnarounds in the refinery's history. Um, we had an additional 2,500 workers there uh, for that period, and we spent over $90 million in upgrades and uh, mission control devices and uh, maintenance work on the refinery. Those turnarounds are really amazing to watch, just how much gets done and the number of people, and it's like watching an ant colony. It's so yes. organized. Anyway, I, yes. uh, I used to really exactly. enjoy working with the guys on on uh, doing the recruiting for those. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's something else to see all those people and how they work together and um, it's, right. it's a lot of planning. Uh, they're a sustainable business in our community, which is an economic generator. In other words, they turn out the economics for our community. They, they hire a lot of our people. So I, I appreciate them very much. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Michael. <laughs> And you know the thing about it too. I know we've had meetings on that on the on you guys' campus, and I always feel so safe. You know, even though all of this is going on around, but I always feel so safe. You guys are do a fantastic job. It's safety first, and so I really appreciate that. But thanks so much. Good to see you, Ken. I'm glad that you're here. So, um, okay then. So, Ed, are you are you there? Okay, I guess he isn't. So. What we'll do now is we'll we'll move on to 
with to Michael. Michael is our five minutes uh, spotlight speaker. Now, for those of you that don't uh, that don't know the manner, what we do is that every time we would have a quarterly breakfast uh, before we'd end the breakfast, we would have uh, a, a drawing for to see who would be the next five minute speaker at the next quarterly breakfast. So we're still doing that, even though we're in a Zoom mode. So the last breakfast we had. Uh, Michael Stewart was, uh, we chose him as our five minute speaker. Oh, wait a minute, let's stop, stop, stop. You know how we are, you know, everybody, everybody has so, so formal with their meetings, but it seems like I'm usually not that formal. I see that Ed is on now. Um, Ed, would you like to tell us a little bit about the, uh, sorry about that, Michael. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about the, um, Ed, are you there, are you there? Uh, uh, he's on the phone. Well, is I had, can't hear him. I, I think he's having audio problems. So uh, when he's oh. able to uh, make yeah. that work, we'll right. have him on. Well, we'll come back to him. Okay. Well, Michael, sorry about that, but you don't understand. We're all family here. Okay, Michael, yeah. take it away. It's about your M. What is it? M and B Associates. Five I'm minutes. Tell you all about M and B Associates. That's one of my companies. Good morning to the Carson Chamber Quarterly Breakfast. Uh, I'm Mike Stewart. Michael Stewart. And uh, I am the uh, president of the m and Associates Consultancy Company. m and Associates has as our mission to professionally assist the business and real estate community in the greater Los Angeles and South Bay region with a wide variety of consulting services specializing in utilities coordination project construction management, entitlement, entitlement expediting, building and permitting, land use planning, economic development, and community and governmental relations. Okay, long title. We help our clients navigate through the county and city regulations to get their projects built. We use such techniques as special use permits, we also use zone variances. We also go in and do an overlay development project. Uh, we try to work with our clients and coordinate every aspect of development management, working with the elected uh, leadership and senior staff of the locations where we're doing a development. Los Angeles County. <laughs> City of Los Angeles, also the cities in Long Beach, Compton, Gardena, Cerritos, and uh, we've done some work with the Los Angeles World Airport. So we're very excited about that. Uh, they're spending $25 billion this decade, and I think that our city should get involved not only with the port ferry, not only with the ports of Long Beach, ports of LA, but the other economic generator, which is doing tremendous work, is the LA World Airports. And I think we should make some visits over there and go talk to them too. Our associates has a combined 100 years of experience in public service, project management, and real estate services. You know my associates, You've seen them in a lot of meetings at the Carson Chamber, because I always bring my team with me. The associates include Armin Ross, who is a number one development specialist. Ted Brass, you remember Ted, he is the real estate uh, guru for our company. We have a uh, former retired Los Angeles City Councilman, Robert Farrell, who actually started our business off along with, uh, I think, uh, some people would on this on this call would know that I think uh, Assessor Jeff Crane knows uh, the councilman. You know Rob Katherman, who is my associate. He is a, a, a man, one of the managing associates. And Wanda Moore, if you heard that name, you know who she is. She is the former executive deputy to Mayor Tom Bradley, Mr. Assessor, and uh, she helped me start this business. And another person I'm gonna tell you about guy named Joe Sorrell, who started us off in the consulting business in Los Angeles. I'll tell you that story at another time. m and Associates Company was established by my wife and I, Bernice B. Stewart. 
uh, in July of 2005. Uh, I just had recently retired from the city of Los Angeles and our, our, our company is named after the co-founders and, and owners, Michael and Bernice, MNB, okay, and MNB Associates. Bernice, with 30 years of administrative and executive experience, she started when she was seven yep. uh, in banking industry in Southern California Gas Company. She is a retiree of the Southern California Gas Company. Mm -hmm. She's the chief financial officer of our company and also of a later established MB Communications and Land Use Incorporated. She manages the day to day operations. And I'm on a stipend. She, she's. I work for her, so I'm just letting you know. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and also mm -hmm. serves as treasurer and business. Lena knows who she is. Uh, you know, she's she running everything. Anyway, <laughs> I have spent 40 years of professional service experience. I am a city of Los Angeles retiree with 30 mm -hmm. years of service. I served as a deputy city councilman in the 15th district for Joan Milky Flores and for John S. Gibson Jr., former president of the city council. I'm a, I was a management analyst uh, working on the team with Dr. Erwin C. Piper, who taught me about finance. He's this, in the city administrative's office and I handled the department's budgets of fire, police, and public buildings. And I ended as the district facilities manager of the city of Los Angeles, where I handled 250 buildings of the city of Los Angeles, including the San Pedro Municipal Building, West Valley Municipal Building, the, uh, the Van Nuys City Hall, the development of downtown Alvera Street, a number of things I was interested. They taught me how to be a consultant because I was over finance. I was over construction services. I was over uh, the issues of, of dealing with fleet services, security, custodial services, everything that you want to do and run it. They had to have a person in the field running these, going to see these buildings. And that's what I did all day. Just go to the businesses, coordinate. And by the way, I asked if every elected official, including the mayor, several mayors I worked for, what are your top five priorities? When I did that, we worked on the budget and we found out that by doing and working with those elected officials, General Services Department, which I worked with, always got funding, never got cut, and we always added personnel throughout the years. I'm not saying I'm responsible for it, but when you work with the elected officials, you deal with them, and senior management, you kind of get things done. My areas of expertise is public works, water and utilities. Of course, LA Water and Power, Southern California Gas. My wife spent 30 years as I can walk in and talk to those folks. And uh, also, uh, we, we meet with Southern California Edison. We work in a cooperative manner with government entities to construct effective programs tailored for our clients' specific needs. We like to do in, deal with public affairs by working closely in a public-private partnership with elected officials, get their vision, ask them could they give us and my client their good counsel on how we should proceed. Once you get that sign in, you can get your projects well done, and then you work with your senior management. We work in a cooperative manner with all of the cities. Now, I've been involved with the Carson Chamber since I retired from the city. And presently, I'm on the board of directors. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, Mayor, Mayor. Glad to see you. Good morning, how are you? Good to see you. Alone. We'll talk to you after Michael finishes his five-minute presentation. No, no. I've got three more minutes. <laughs> In the executive board of the Carson Chamber, I was a former chairman of the Legislative Affairs Committee, Kenny, and I am uh, presently the chairman of the Economic Development Committee. MNB Associates was the Small Business of the Year for the Carson Chamber and Carson Community 
recognized by the city council, thank you, uh, in 2015. And I was made and selected by my uh, contemporaries as a best of the year for the Carson Chamber of Commerce in 2017. Um, a short list of my clients, uh, one, of, one of them being Pulogis. Pulogis was the largest, one of the largest goods movement uh, uh, companies in the world. And uh, they're still here. We're working with them also. I work definitely with Matt Construction, uh, basically with water and power connections and generations and on their construction projects. They took me from Wilshire Corridor to downtown to even to the area of Bel Air where we had, we, we worked on super expensive housing development. Uh, I worked with Northgate Market, uh, Northgate Gonzalez, Gonzalez Markets and of the 37 stores, we developed seven with my company of their store locations. I am pleased to say that I, I got a chance to work with SA Recycling in some of their entitlement issues. Yeah. And they were very, very, uh, I learned about what they do. And uh, they're one of the ecological uh, places where the cities and where they are operating in, which is like 104 locations and throughout the region. They are massively uh, working with environmental resources because they get a lot of the stuff. I work with uh, Albert and Albert uh, Properties LLC. We developed a 14 acre goods movement center at, uh, at, uh, at 120th and Wilmington. And uh, that is operating now, leased up and that industrial tract over there we worked closely with Watson Land to make sure that it fit into what they were doing cooperatively. And then, then we got our, our project built. Michael, now, Michael, Michael. So that is Michael. my companies and uh, that I work with, Thomas Saffron Associates and 7-Eleven Corporation. Thank you for your okay. time. Thank you. All right, thank you, Michael. That's the longest That was minutes. six have... minutes. Uh, <laughs> Seemed like 26 to me. No. Okay. You know, we're family, sweetheart, but we do have other things to do, okay? But thanks again. You have, you're very busy, you're a very busy person, and we really appreciate you. We appreciate everything you do here at Carson, the city of Carson, the community, and the chamber. Uh, speaking of uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to have her come on and, <laughs> uh, and, uh, Say a few words, uh, please. Madam Mayor, are you still there? Oh, yeah, yeah, there you are. Madam Mayor, you, as you know, we have Assessor Prang for our uh, keynote speaker today. So could you please say a few words to us, Madam Mayor? It's just going to be a few words. I want to congratulate you, you on getting your interim uh, person in to uh, president to represent. I wasn't able to make the meeting. I mean, the, the event last Saturday, but I have had an opportunity to speak with him. He's a former employee of the city of Carson. So yes. congratulations, I, I'm excited. And uh, I think uh, we're off to a good start. And I do wanna sit down and meet with you on some of the initiatives that I've given, spoken to 12 of your members about. So at some point in time, I, we will be getting together soon. Uh, I'm really excited about the fact that Juneteenth is a federal holiday now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, just to let, we will be having a virtual Juneteenth celebration on the 19th. You can uh, um, watch it virtually. Mm -hmm. And uh, excited about the fact that the city of Carson was one of the first cities in California to start uh, to host a Juneteenth celebration. So we're mm -hmm. on the radar, we're on the map. Uh, we got some good things that we, passed a structurally balanced budget. Uh, Tuesday was just for the first time in a decade they were, we were able to do that. And we have a surplus of revenue. And I just want to work with the chamber because uh, uh, I've been reaching out and Cal State Dominguez Hill. So thank you for having me this morning. You know I'm running, so I can't stay long. I want to hear, uh, yes. stick around for a little while. But you're on my cell phone right now. <laughs> so... <laughs> I had to get in because I committed to being here. So thank you for yeah. inviting me. I look forward to future meetings. Okay, thank you thank so you. much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, really appreciate the, the job you're doing here in the city as well. Thanks again. Thank okay, you. well, 
with that, let us just start. We'll go on into our uh, uh, presentation with uh, our assessor. Let me read, give you a little information about uh, Assessor uh, Jeff Prang. Los Angeles County Assessor Jeff Prang was elected in 2014 as the 27th Assessor for the County of Los Angeles and re-elected in 2018. Raised in Warren, Michigan, Assessor Prang is a graduate of Michigan State University. After graduation, Mr. Prang relocated to California, where he served nearly 18 years as a council member for the city of West Hollywood, including four terms as mayor. And that is among many of the other positions that he's held in the public sector. Upon taking office in 2014 as a Los Angeles County Assessor, Mr. Prang implemented sweeping reforms to ensure that the strictest ethical guidelines rooted in fairness, accuracy, and integrity would be adhered to his office. At Assessor Prang is a State Board of Equalization license appraiser and administers the largest office of its kind in the nation with 1,200 employees that provides the foundation for a property tax system that generates over $17 billion annually. Please welcome Assessor Jeff Prang. Thank you very much, uh, Lena. It's great. Thank you for that kind introduction. It's great to be with you today. Let me uh, also acknowledge the uh, the mayor. Mayor, I don't think I've had a chance to see you since you were elected. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. I know that the city of Carson is in very good hands with your uh, uh, ascension to the, uh, the, the mayoralty. Um, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to speak with you this morning. Um, want to uh, give thanks to uh, your, your Chairman Richard Chang for, uh, um, for the opportunity. And Lena, thank you for putting it all together. Uh, and the entire executive committee uh, for the work that you do for the great city of Carson. I am really excited to be here. And I think that the information um, that I'm going to present, I think will be useful and informative for you, give you a little bit of a additional insight about the things that the assessor does and how it's relevant to uh, the business community. Um, Forgive me for those of you who've heard me speak before. Um, um, I sometimes uh, repeat some of the same things over and over again because the county is really big and most people haven't heard it the first time, so I apologize for the second. But I always like to begin um, my remarks by telling people uh, what I do and just as importantly, what I do not do. Um, I do not collect taxes. There's another guy <laughs> who does that. He has a very intuitive title. He's called the tax collector. Um, <laughs> Who collects taxes? The tax collector. The people often call me the tax assessor. There is no such thing as the title of tax assessor in the United States. I don't know where that comes from. People call that to me all the time, but that's really a conflation of two separate offices, the tax collector and the assessor. I'm just the assessor. Oh, um, I did uh, forget to give a shout out to uh, council member Barry Waite, uh, uh, who I've known for uh, many years. Barry, it's great to see you in uh, um, one of multiple capacities in the, uh, in the public and civic Welcome. world. Um, so for those who don't know a lot about, about the assessor, um, what I'm one of three countywide elected officials. The other two are much better known. Um, and I think you could probably argue based on what we see in the newspaper lately that that could be for better or for worse. But the other two are the sheriff and the district attorney. As Alina said, I administer a department with about 1,200 employees. We're, we have six locations throughout the county. And we're the largest property assessment agency in the United States. We're responsible for establishing the value for over 2.5 million real property parcels and business assessments annually, which last year we were valued at $1.8 trillion. That's just the assessed value. That's not the market value. Um, last year, the... Uh, property tax revenues that begin with the uh, valuation that my office uh, conducts provided um, nearly $18 billion in uh, revenue for vital public services, such as public health, hospitals, parks, libraries, police, roads, all the things we rely on from schools and uh, city government. Um, proper property taxes tend to be one of the larger sources of revenue for, uh, for cities. Um, but in addition to real property, which as you know, includes land and improvements, I'm also responsible for assessing the value of what 
what is known as business personal property, which includes furniture, equipment, and machinery. Um, it also includes aircraft, both commercial and general aviation aircraft, mobile homes, boats, and believe it or not, even racehorses. So my primary responsibility is the pr production of the annual assessment role, which is essentially the inventory of all taxable property in the county. And the assessment role serves a number of functions. A couple of them that are important. It's one, local cities and school districts um, follow the assessment role as, as they prepare for their budget in anticipation of property tax revenues. Um, it also serves as uh, to give some indication as to the health of the real estate market. So last year, the 2019-2020 assessment role grew at almost 6%. And it represented the 10th consecutive year of property value growth countywide since the recession of 2008 to 2010. Uh, right now, we're nearing the end of our fiscal year. Uh, we closed the fiscal year at the end of June. Uh, for the current uh, year, we're estimating that there is going to be positive uh, growth in property values countywide, but a more modest rate of somewhere between 3 and 4%, um, which is really exceptional given the fact uh, that the economy has had such negative impacts over the last year. And while the growth is down from uh, uh, last year, it still reflects a real uh, a positive and reasonably optimistic uh, uh, change. Some of the things that contribute to the uh, change in the uh, property value growth is, uh, the, the main thing is uh, um, the increase in the cost of living. Proposition 13 allows uh, property values to be adjusted annually by no more than 2%, although this year it will only be 1%. Um, um, business personal property also reflected a modest dip in value, the first time we've seen this really since uh, Prop 13 went into effect. Um, we did see an increase in new construction, although it's roughly half the typical growth we've experienced in recent years. Um, uh, the transfers of property, um, that's the buying and selling of property, are still strong um, and served a, a, a role in contributing to the growth in the assessment role and property values. To give you an idea of some of the things in the local market, I've included a table that displays the assessment growth percentages in a number of city, in, in Carson and cities ad, uh, adjacent, uh, including Torrance, uh, uh, LA and Long Beach. Um, as you can see, Carson's property values last year grew at 5.3%, mm -hmm. uh, LA at 6.6%, uh, and it also includes the number of uh, um, homes, apartments and commercial properties. Um, Carson is um, uh, last year, as I it was listed, with about a 5.3 percentage increase in property values. This was uh, main, uh, mainly attributed to the construction of new commercial properties, including a couple of cargo and truck yards um, uh, for vehicles that were are doing business at the uh, at the Port of LA and Long Beach. Another exciting project that was recently completed, uh, as you. I'm sure you're all aware of is the Evolve South Bay, a 300 uh, unit residential complex. Um, that's the first component of a larger planned 300 acre mixed use development called the Boulevards at South Bay. There's no doubt that this project and similar ones in the city will have an impact um, on economic development as well as uh, property values in that area. Uh, despite COVID um, and the economic recession that accompanied it, the real estate market in LA County fared reasonably well. The median sales price for a single family home, not including condos, rose um, over 18% to an all time high in uh, May. Our current data shows that the median sales price for a single family home in LA County is $788,000. Um, two major things uh, contributed to the increase in uh, uh, residential property values. One is there was very low inventory, so people were competing over the few homes that were available and uh, as well as historically low mortgage rates. And um, I have another chart here which shows the median sales price of, uh, of homes in, uh, uh, in Carson and surrounding areas. So Carson and Long Beach are just below the uh, county median, um, but they've also shown, as you can see, very strong growth over the last year. Um, so because I'm talking to the Carson Chamber, many of you own businesses and are likely familiar with having to file uh, the annual business property statement, uh, which were due uh, April 1st. They became delinquent as of May 7th. But we know that a lot of small businesses were hit especially hard because of COVID. You know, restaurants didn't open. Um, 
I think places like gyms and um, retail stores remained closed. So a lot of the um, personal business property in those businesses was not being used. And um, uh, our data demonstrates that small business revenue in LA County had decreased over 30% compared to a, a year previously. So we have been proactively reviewing businesses hit hardest by the pandemic. Uh, uh, and we have provided property tax relief to over 47,000 small businesses countywide uh, to reflect the impact on, uh, of COVID-19 on business personal property. In Carson, we proactively reduced the personal property assessments of 754 businesses um, out of a total of about 25 presents about 30% of all uh, uh, business property or what we call unsecured assessments in the city. Um, and even if you have a business that did not receive a proactive reduction, it's important to remember that you can request the assessor to review your business property by filing what's called a decline in value application. Um, this also applies to real property if you think your, your, your real property experienced a decline. Um, um, and what we, when we talk about decline in value, this occurs when the current market value of your property is less than the current assessed value of the property. And the assessed value is, is more or less what you paid for it, plus the 2% annual um, adjustment. Um, and if you believe that your property is worth less now than what you, essentially what you paid for it, you can file a decline in uh, market, uh, uh, decline in value application uh, starting July 2nd. Um, it's unlikely that your residential property would have gone down since all evidence seems to suggest that they went up rather dramatically, but we, we do believe a lot of commercial properties, hotels, uh, properties that uh, include restaurants and retails and gyms may have had negative impacts. Um, moving on to another topic, one of the things I've been talking a lot about for the last number of months is uh, Proposition 19. Prop 19 was a measure sponsored by the California Association of Realtors. It was adopted by the uh, voters last fall and was uh, put into full effect as of April. Uh, the measure does two things, uh, two primary things. The first uh, component of the bill and the one that was most popular with the voters um, is a component that allows a homeowner who's over 55, severely disabled, or the victim of a natural disaster to transfer their property tax base with them when they sell their home and buy a new one. So if you bought your home in 1990, your property tax base is probably relatively low compared to the current market value. And if you're a senior and you wanna move under Prop 19, you can do that and your taxes won't go up. Um, it, it, there were some benefits uh, related to that prior to Prop 19, but they were more limited. Now Prop 19 allows the eligible homeowners to move three times. It allows you to move anywhere in the state and it allows you to buy a home of any value. Those are, uh, uh, th those are all increases from the, 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 the previous law. Um, the second component of Prop 19, which is a little bit more controversial, relates to the transfer of property between family members, specifically between parents and children and grandparents and grandchildren. We refer to these transfers as intergenerational transfers. And this part was not very well known during the campaign, if at all. Um, Previously in California, you could transfer your, your home and up to a million dollars in additional property to your, uh, to your children without the property being reassessed. They could inherit the property and your tax base. Under Prop 19, there's a whole bunch of new limitations. So under Prop 19, the only property that your children can inherit with the tax base is your primary residence. No other property now qualifies. Secondly, for the child to inherit that home and the tax base, they must make that home their primary residence within one year and file the homeless exemption. Um, also, there's a limit to how much of the tax base they can inherit. So essentially, if your property is worth a million dollars or less, they can inherit the property and there'll be no reassessment. But once the property exceeds the $1 million mark, um, there will be a new blended um, assessment and there will be a property tax increase. Um, also previously, uh, as I said, that uh, no other property now qualifies in the, uh, under the previous law. If you own, for instance, a rental property that you want to leave to your kids, um, you could transfer that property and up to a million dollars in assessed value of that property to them. 
Now, um, when you transfer that property to the children, it will be reassessed to market rate and the taxes will go up. It's um, uh, from a policy perspective, it's a little troubling because it's a somewhat regressive um, uh, uh, change. Um, it uh, disproportionately impacts uh, you know, a lot of working class and middle income families who have modest real estate ho holdings who are hoping to leave their homes and property to their children without them having to uh, absorb uh, tax increases. Um, unfortunately, part of Prop 19 was in order to pay for the revenue loss from these benefits that were given to seniors, they took away benefits from families. And so um, that's causing a little bit of consternation in the community. Um, one of the really difficult things that we're dealing with with Prop 19 is that uh, uh, for some inexplicable reason, when the measure was written, they gave assessors three months, three to four months essentially to implement the measure. Um, conservatively, I would have asked for eight, you know, 18 months. It's a, it's a significant change in our operations. Um, the bill was written rather hastily, so it's chock full of deficiencies and ambiguities and contradictions. Um, and typically when a bill is, uh, a ballot measure is passed, it's quickly followed by legislation, which clarifies all those ambiguities and inconsistencies. Unfortunately, it didn't work that way. They, uh, the, the, it's now in effect, there's all types of problems. People <clears throat> are in the office looking for a direction and we don't have any to offer them until legislation is adopted. There is legislation, uh, Senate Bill 539, introduced by Senator Hertzberg, but that's still working its way through the legislative process. So until that's done, there will be some confusion. And just to give you an idea what that confusion may mean, um, let's say that you um, want your children to inherit your property, let's say three children. And so uh, uh, when you, but the law says that you can give your primary residence to your children and the, the child inheriting the property must live there. Well, under a strict reading of Prop 19, if you have three children, the law says that all three children must move into that property in order for them to inherit it, as well as the tax base. An absurd interpretation, if, particularly if you have adult children, but that's what it says. Um, and unfortunately, as the assessor, I'm an administrator. I don't have the authority to make interpretive decisions. Um, we know that they didn't mean to, to create a family reunification program with this. Uh, but that's how they wrote it. And until the legislation is, uh, uh, clarifying legislation is done, it puts assessors in a very awkward, awkward position. Um, but anyway, uh, to help the public understand Prop 19, uh, at least to share what we know at this point, we developed a web page which is dedicated to Prop 19 that offers a lot of information and resources, it includes um, a couple of tools that will help you determine um, if your new property tax basis will be if you, um, if you're uh, uh, transferring your property as a senior, or if you're giving your property to your, uh, to your children, and all that's on my, on my website. Last thing I want to mention um, was just a little tax savings tips for everybody. Um, particularly, I want to point this out to the, uh, the, to, to the mayor. It might be a good issue that you want to communicate with your constituents. And that deals with a tax savings program known as the Homer's Exemption. Uh, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Um, so the homeowner's exemption is our most easily accessible um, property tax program. It's available to anybody who owns their home and who occupies that as their principal residence annually as of, as of January 1st. It reduces your assessed value by $7,000, which will save you about $70, $70 a year on your property tax bill. I know it's not a lot of money, but it's, you know, it's a little bit of money every year and it adds up over the, over the lifetime of the, uh, the home. We estimate that about a third of all homeowners in LA County do not apply for the homeowner's exemption, primarily because they simply don't know about it. Uh, people don't know what the assessor is. It's very hard for me to get information to, to the public. Uh, as a result, there's about $30 million in annually in unredeemed savings. Um, in Carson, 37% of eligible homeowners do not claim the homeowner's exemption. So, so Mayor, what I was gonna suggest if, uh, Telling people how to save money on the property taxes is probably good politics. Yes. We're happy to work. We're happy to work with you to uh, promote that uh, savings with the, uh, uh, the the thousands of homeowners in Carson who uh, aren't taking advantage of it. 
It's a one-time application. It's very easy um, and, and quick. Uh, we still need a wet signature, so we just you know, print it out off our website and mail it in, and it's all easy to find on our website. Professor um, Frank, one quick question. Can, I'm going to invite you to one of our council meetings to do a presentation. Yep. I'll have staff to coordinate <laughs> that with you because this is good information for my residents. We will. Uh, I will be. I will be happy to do that. Thank I'll you. I'll tell you that um, in a couple of cities as well. The city of Linwood and La Puente, the city manager actually took it to heart and he, they actually mailed a copy of the homeowner's exemption at city expense to every homeowner in the city. And, um, the, uh, and it, does, it, does it cost the city any, any, does it affect your property tax revenues at all? Um, but I would, be, I would be honored and delighted to come and speak at, uh, uh, at a council meeting and talk about this. Thank you. Yeah, so we can do that in Carson. That's a good idea. And um, I am, uh, uh, and at that point, I actually looks, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done with my presentation. I'm happy to stop now and uh, and take any questions. This, uh, uh, this is my contact information. It's my uh, phone number. That's my own email, which I read. And uh, we also send out a very informative monthly newsletter. I don't send out newsletters with me giving scrolls to people. We always put useful tips that... Uh, uh, public officials and members of the public would find helpful in terms of owning property and understanding how to access the, uh, the system. And I urge you to, uh, to sign up. I have one quick question before. Uh, did I hear you say that if you are senior owns um, rental, I mean, um, investment income, they could qualify for this uh, tax saving? No, they no longer qualify. So, so, okay. so investment income, so investment income, an income property, you used to be able to transfer to your children uh, with the tax, uh, tax basis. You can now transfer the property to them, but it will be reassessed at market value. Um, you, uh, the only property that you can, as a senior or disabled, that you can, you can transfer your tax base for your primary residence only. Okay. Uh, if you're not transferring, can you qualify for this tax exemption? Say for instance, you have two commercial uh, investment properties. No. No. Okay. That's. I thank you. I was listening to our. Yeah, thank you. A, my pleasure. If there's other, uh, I also just. Uh, um, I. I also put my uh, contact information into the chat as well. Okay. Council Member Deere, I forgot to acknowledge you. It's nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. I have a question too, Jeffrey. Uh, it's um, it's a related issue, but it's uh, not part of your presentation. It has to do with uh, these no low property tax cities in California. Right. And uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with this. We're very familiar in Carson because when we incorporated in 1968, the uh, citizens committee negotiated away all of the property tax, uh, basically primarily to the county of LA. So right now for every dollar in property tax that the, that the property owners pay in Carson, when they pay it to the county, only 6.8% of it goes to the city of Carson. And um, other cities have a lot larger percentage of the property tax. Uh, I think Long Beach has like 21% and LA 26% and um, Hawthorne 19% and so forth. <clears throat> so um, do you, I know your office doesn't regulate that of course, but do you know, what is the justification uh, for that, uh, that discrepancy? Uh, you know, I have to tell you, as you know, I was the president of the Contract Cities Association a number of years ago. Yeah. Uh, and um, I asked Sam Olivito, and I, uh, for the life of me, I cannot understand the, the low, no property tax justification, why they did it. The ta property tax system was very different prior to Prop 78. Why a city would decide to incorporate and say, we don't want property taxes, even though it's being collected and going somewhere. Um, but lots of cities did. There must have been some sort of uh, um, uh, value uh, at that time that the citizens at a time of corporation thought that was important. Um, as you know, a number of years later, that 
the legislature did pass a law to give a bit of in the 80s minimum. yeah forcing but, the county to share a small amount i don't know why they don't go back and create a, a standardization so that all cities could have equal opportunities to uh um to, you know everybody pays all property owners pay the same tax rate right government agencies collect that at different rates and i don't understand why that's uh allowed to continue. I think that is requires a, a, a legislative, perhaps a constitutional fix. Although it always troubled me because I just think it's inequitable. So Carson, yes. uh, the, the founders of Carson made a decision to be a low property tax city at the time of incorporation. I don't know why, but things changed. Um, it just it doesn't seem fair that LA, you know, Long Beach could have 20, 20 to 25 cents on a dollar and you get uh, four or five cents on the dollar. Um, but uh, you know, another example is the city of El Segundo. I think it's like four percent, and the city of Hawthorne, adjacent to El Segundo, it's nineteen percent. And the, it begs the question: What is the county doing for Hawthorne that they're not doing for El Segundo? You know, uh, such a huge discrepancy, and they're adjoin adjoining cities. I would presume that the county doesn't want to see that change because that's now part of their structural um, uh, uh, revenue stream. Right. But the state should really look at property tax allocation, create a level of equity, you know, try to keep everybody whole to a degree that they can. But it is it really, you know, I was a, a assistant city manager in Pico Rivera and they were a, a, a low, no property tax city. It just made it, made it very difficult to sustain high quality public services when uh, a, a basic foundation of local revenue was not available to that city. And right. it means that those cities have to rely on sales tax, which is uh, pretty regressive. Well, my last question uh, through Barry, our, our uh, president, um, is that if there was a concerted effort by no low property tax cities, like the contract cities uh, had talked about uh, several times, um, do you think that you would be in a position to at least write an opinion letter uh, on that subject to um, the legislators, you know, that would be considering it? Uh, possibly, you know, I don't mind as a, you on the spot, Jeffrey. So, <laughs> so as the assessor, I am not, you know, we don't, uh, I am not an expert in property taxes. We don't do property taxes. Um, I don't know all the, uh, the, the, the intricacies of property tax law. I, could, I, I would be willing to say, and I have said, as a, somebody who has been elected to local office for a very long time, from a policy perspective, I perceive that there's an inequity and that I support trying to create, uh, um, to address solutions that would equalize how uh, revenues are collected and, uh, and shared. But I am not a uh, I am not a subject matter expert on taxation, and uh, okay, I great. Uh, oh, thank you. I appreciate that answer very much. Thank you, Barry. I can give you a little a, a little more background on it because I worked on that uh, with the city starting back in 1987, and I think it was 1989 when we finally got some success through contract cities, of which uh, Jeff Prang was the president. Um, soon after that. Um, well, maybe not soon after that, but after that, he was president when uh, when I was uh, first on the council in Lomita in 2006, I think, you were president, right? Anyway, uh, sure. so, but uh, when many cities incorporated the idea of not levying a city property tax, the property taxes were all um, incremental. So you had whatever your school tax rate was, your county tax rate, your fire protection district, and all these in it added up. And then the city amount would be on top of that. So when many cities incorporated, they either chose to have a very low tax rate or no property tax rate, uh, choosing to get their taxes in other forms. So then what happened was Prop 13 came in and just whacked the whole thing down to a set level. Um, and so your that meant that the tax rate in each city, instead of being that combination that they had, it was the same tax rate uh, across the whole of the state, effectively, uh, with just some minor change, minor variations in that. And so then um, a city like Carson, our businesses, our residents were paying the same amount 
a property tax as people in Torrance, Long Beach and LA and only getting a small portion of it. So we had many battles back and forth over that. And, um, and uh, the state did a good job of setting up the battle between the cities and the counties. And finally, the cities and counties realized they were all being ripped off by the same thing, got together. And, and uh, so that changed it. And so that's where we got to that nearly 7% level. So that's now the minimum that any uh, city will get in the state of California is that 6.8% that uh, Councilman Deer mentioned. So anyway, there's the background on it. And there have been several efforts to uh, fix this over the years because it's very inequitable. Um, and there are a number of other strange things left behind by that. There were some odd little pieces in Prop 13 that uh, people don't know about that made for some uh, winners and some losers. And so uh, uh, there have been a number of fixes over the years, but there's still work left to be done there. And um, it certainly impacts us in our community. So anyway, there's your, there's your uh, uh, government lecture for the day of how this happened, but um, we are glad that we get that 6.8%, but still it's, uh, it's interesting. And, and by the way, I, I don't know, Jeff, I don't know if this is still true, but at one point, the, just a few years ago, the uh, highest assessed valuation property in LA County was the Getty Center. And number two was the Carson Refinery. Um, so their, hmm. their, their valuation is very high, but still on the same rate. Whereas you have like the Chevron refinery in El Segundo where their valuation is much lower because the property hadn't changed hands, but still paying on the same rate. Well, I can tell you, I'm not sure. I don't know what the highest uh, assessed value in the county is, uh, is now, but I can tell you that the refineries uh, argued with us for about a dozen years on, uh, on their assessment. And there were some significant reductions in their assessed value in, uh, in uh, uh, recent years. So, but they did. <laughs> they, 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 uh, they, they argued with us and, uh, and they prevailed. So, um, but, uh, to Barry and to, uh, that's one of our top priorities, Lena, and uh, that I was discussing with, uh, we have a lobbyist. And so we've been discussing this no and no property tax and how we can best, best thread it. So Barry, I will be inviting you to those ad hoc committee meetings to share with us your information, but we've already started the process of discussing and rolling, saying which what direction we should go in. Thank you, we appreciate that. It's it's important and we, we understand that as the change. Yeah. Our federal yeah. lobbyists and uh, the uh, city manager and I and the HADA committee will be working on that. Thank you. And okay. something else, a couple of other important tidbits to share about our assessor. Um, he also is a mean trombone player. So he is the only elected official I've ever seen do a trombone duet at a, at a government function and it was excellent. Uh, and also, uh, so we'll be a little belated here, but a happy birthday plus two days. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, happy birthday, that's right. <laughs> so I baked all of this for him. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any other questions for uh, for the assessor? Anybody else has any questions? Wow. Well, that means we did a great job. I wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if you have yes, more questions, as I said, you have my my phone number and my email. Um, you know, we value the relationship we have with uh, with all the chambers. Uh, businesses have a disproportionate interest in a lot of the work that we do. So we want to keep this relationship and make sure that we're giving you information that you can share with your members um, that will help them save money in their taxes or help them navigate what is otherwise a very complex system. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be with all of you this morning. And we'll be saving this to our video channel so uh, people can watch this later on. So we can share it with the community. Yeah, we have and and uh, Mr. Assessor, please thank uh, Michelle Chambers for uh, reaching out to us that we, to get this done. Really appreciate that and really appreciate her. She did a fantastic yeah. job. She was right on top of everything, Michelle Chambers. So thanks again, uh, Mr. Assessor. And I know you're going to the funeral and I don't, we don't want to be, uh, uh, have you be late or anything like that, but we really appreciate everything. We appreciate your time. 
And uh, we know you have a lot of things to do, not only take care of this whole, the, uh, the whole county, but have your, your 1,200 uh, employees as well. So we really appreciate you taking time to do this. And we, I don't know if you've come to Carson before on, at this level, but I do hope that this encounter was, it was a great encounter uh, as far as you, for the city of Carson and having our mayor and Mayor Pro Tem here and everything and our, be our wonderful uh, chamber, we welcome you, we appreciate you, and we look forward to doing something with you later on, maybe in person, hopefully. And then when you come in person, you'll have to bring your trombone, okay? <laughs> Sounds so, good. So our entertainment as well, okay? But thanks again, so really much. appreciate that. Great to see you all, okay. thank you. Yeah. All right, so Barry, are we ready for our, uh, for our drawing, for our next uh, five minute speaker? We are. Have we? Okay, so I can so I can think of a number. Mm, <laughs> the number, the number is eleven. Who's number eleven, Barry? Taryn from Textured Tech. Yay, Karen! Well, well, unmute yourself and put yourself on video so we can see you, Karen. Karen. You want to put down oh, there hello, she guys. Is. Hello, hello, you hello. <laughs> So you'll be the five minute speaker. She's the one that has, uh, oh. uh, tell us a little bit about real beauty quickly that like you, you have the uh, a beauty supply place. Yes, so I will, yes, I'm actually born and raised in Carson um, and wanted to make sure that I opened up a business here. Um, Texture Tech is two years old here, right on the corner of Carson Street and Grace. Uh, it's a 2400 square beauty supply. Uh, store with all personal care and um, hair goods. So I'm excited. Um, I've been um, listening in and really excited about the chamber. Hi yeah. there. Hey, Hello I'm there. I'll be glad to see you. This is your mayor. Thank you for giving me this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, Madam Mayor. Yes. Thank oh, you. Uh, and Taryn has been so involved. Also, she's with. Uh, uh, she listens in, and I don't know if she's a part of. Uh, of Michael's committee, uh, the um, economic development. She's, uh, you know, yeah. I love that youth. You know, we got to have that yeah. youth in our, yeah, that yes. youth, yeah, youth. That's you know? Well, Christine, sure. Christine and I just finished the um, Carson Leadership, um, you right. know, program through the chamber. You know, yes. it, it became virtual um, yes. shortly after yes. it began, but yes, we, we just finished it early this year. Yes, and Christine, Christine over at Essay Recycling, she, uh, she, is a, she does a fantastic job. Whatever we need, Christine does it. You know, the two of you guys, you guys are just dynamite. I, I, I love it, dynamite, oh, I love it. But anyway, let's see. Okay, so you're the next five minute speaker, okay, for, uh, for the next quarterly breakfast, okay? And I think that's gonna be in September. And hopefully we, ne we may have, be able to have that in person. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And you'll have to do something with my hair before we have that, if it's in person, okay? <laughs> Anyway, that, okay, we okay, we can't hear you, but that's okay. Um, the other thing is that now we're getting ready to draw for uh, Amy. How many prizes are we giving away today? Three or five? Amy. Okay. Whatever. We'll give away, okay, we'll give away we'll give away five. We'll give away five. So she here we that. go. I'm getting ready to pick. You ready? All right. Okay. I'm thinking of number. Speaking of five, let's take five. Number five. Who's number five? Tammy Myers. Oh, okay. Are you there, Tammy? I think she has okay. left. Mm. Okay, so must be present to win. Let's uh, let's do number seventeen. I gotta remember what numbers I've called, so I won't call them again. Who's number seventeen? Ralph Felix. Hey, Ralph. Are you there, Ralph? He's yeah, here. He He's there. Oh, you get the prize. Hello. Okay, wonderful, Ralph, with his California, oh, I love that cap. Look at him with his California water service cap. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, my goodness, we're going to have to have you come and tell us about what's going to be happening in the, in the future with our with the water and all of that, too, with all of, you know, with the drought up. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah. But anyway, we, you guys got it under control. You know, we got it. You guys got it under control. So yeah. you're, you're, you're our, uh, so Ralph is, the, is you're, so I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think you get a uh, uh, five dollar gift certificate for C's candies. I believe is it, Amy? So yeah. we call it the uh, TFJU prizes. Thanks for joining us, prizes. So Ralph is the, and so he was number seventeen. 
Thank you, Ralph. So we that. So let's get number 22. 22. Oh, no, no. Yeah, 22. Oh, I, yeah, 22. Who's 22? Well, we're not going up to 22 now. I, I will pick the closest to that. Oh, uh, John Arguez from Ikea. Oh, wow. Okay. So maybe he can do it. He can do a, a trade off or something. You know, we give him $5 gift certificate. And he gives us something from Ikea. What, what do you think about that? That sounds good. Anyway, we'll let you know. Maybe okay. Swedish meatballs might be available. Ooh, yummy, yummy, <laughs> yummy. Tell my tummy. Wonderful. Okay. Of course, they so do require some assembly, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about number? Um, tell me, a, give me a number, Mayor, Madam Mayor. Tell me a number, quick. Is she there? Jo uh, Mr. Deer, give me a number, quick. 19, 19. 19 is a good number. That would be 19. Ed Apodaca. Oh, my stars. Great. All right. So there's one, two, three. three. We need two more, right? Yeah. Okay. Somebody. Um, number. Yeah, what, what, day, what day of the month is your birthday fall on? Oh, my stars. That is the <laughs> day of the month is to the 23rd. But we don't have that. And we've no already. I went somewhere close to Okay, the closest to that is Ken Dami. Oh my goodness, Ken. Good. See, Ken, read. You see, you join and you <laughs> we join the, 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 the breakfast and you get them a prize. Okay, so Ken would get that. Okay. Now, you guys remember, you have to send in, you have to email me your, your mailing address or something so I could send you the uh, prizes. So we have one left, right? There's one more left. One more. Okay. So. Uh, Christina, you still on? Pulling. Christina, you still on? She's there. She's there. Uh, oh, okay. Christine. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, Jean Bell. Oh my goodness, Jean Bell. My goodness, I, you know what? If anybody else were to say something, I think everybody that's that one thing it's on the, uh, the board of directors for Carson Chamber. <laughs> It's rigged. <laughs> Energy begins at home. I'm loving it. Listen, guys, it's been great. It's always good. We we just hoping and praying that when when September, when we have our next breakfast, we'll be able to uh, see each other, reach out and touch each other. So we'll be hopefully at the double tree and get get to that bacon again. That's what we miss so much for the double tree is that bacon. <laughs> Okay, you let the little puppy make it, make it, make it, make it, make it. So listen, guys, thanks so much for taking time. We really appreciate you taking your time to do this and 